life, I have worked with engineers. Most of them really, really smart. But the trouble is, to be smart as an engineer, you have to get really involved in the detail. And their training doesn't give them a chance to step back from that detail and think about the people who are investing them, in buying from them, or giving them jobs. What we do here with the sales camp is give them a chance to step back and think about life on the other side of the table so they can better communicate and influence, and in many cases, to sell. Day one is about stepping away from the object, the product or the software and turning it into a full offering. And in fact, an offering that somebody can buy. And there are only five reasons anybody buys something. And we focus on those five reasons and how we can take that core subject and the things that make a bigger offering and turn them into the real buying drivers that will make people invest, buy or uh, partner with you. So I think tires is very beneficial um, because it'll help me put myself in my customer's shoes and kind of understand their buying decisions a little bit better um, and kind of help me tailor my approach and my questions um, in a better way to close the sale. We need to learn what is the actual need of a person and then go and uh, attack that area. That helps us to sell something later on. So if I understand properly that what is important, is time important for this person so I can sell better and only attract that area. Understanding the difference between a product and an offering can, can help me by uh, you know, highlighting that when I give a, a solution to somebody, I'm not just giving that solution alone, I'm also giving a whole uh, package of, of things to them. Now that I understand, I am better informed knowing if I'm designing anything or I'm producing anything. I don't just become like the engineer I am, stick to one direction. I should also think, hey, with this, what else can happen? If it doesn't go the way I plan, if I don't meet the targets I'm looking at, who else could benefit from it? Okay, so it, it gives me a holistic view. So my experience, I come from business to business, a big corporate sales. So I didn't, this I'm learning now about the business more to consumer, the business B2C kind of businesses. So it makes me, I thought it's only about the money from where I come. It's only business to business. But now I understood there are different things. It can be just the state, just make them feel good. It just can be the time, save them time. It can be the risk or the expense. It's not only about the money that I, I used to come from my background as a B2B. I think you can use this so what for everything, like you need to sell yourself like to people. So in the interview, you can um, with all of these questions about the tires and then um, let's convince them that you are good for that job. Like, and um, like, for example, how you can benefit the company with all of these to so what and tires answers. A lot of what I do in my job is uh, technical demonstrations. Uh, so I'll be just telling them about the product and kind of everything that it can do. Uh, but I don't necessarily tell them what it can do for them. So, you know, if they were to ask me the question, so what, then I could tell them that feature ABC will allow them to do one, two, three. You know, they get a connection there, so it's not just these are features. Day two is in two halves. In the first half, we look at turning the whole conversation around. So rather than selling somebody something, we have a conversation that ends up with them having a desire to buy. The second half of the day, we look at the much more complex problem of when I've got somebody with a desire to buy, how do I turn that actually into a forecastable sale? Or how do I actually close it and get some revenue? And uh, we look at some of the uh, software and techniques are used to create a great sales team. Yeah, what I learned from personal representation system is that it helps me to understand um, how I receive information, how I process it, how I store it within myself and how I present it to or send it to someone else. This is very important because it help, enables me to communicate because 99% of what we do as engineers is um, communication. Uh, why do I say this? Is because after you get the job done, whatever it is you're doing, your designs, your, your work in total, you would need to at some point communicate that work to your peers, your colleagues, to get their buy-in, your boss, you would need to get them to agree with you. So, you know, if, if you yourself are more of a kinetic person and all they care about is visuals, then you have to be able to find that, that middle ground between them. 
And you know, the, with Trevor Wilkins, he mentioned that you, if you don't know it, what you need to do is just present all of them and see which one that they, they catch on to. Okay, it's, it's very easy because it's usually from body language. You know, you'll see the eyes open, you'll see the head nod, you'll see something happen that they've connected with you on a different PRS. After taking the lecture, I understood that there are people who are kinesthetic, they want to feel. So it's better to maybe take a product along with me uh, when I'm doing the presentation so they can touch and feel how my product is actually working. So it'll help me present better and gain business faster in a way. So what I got out of the Ted Levitt sketches today was uh, the importance of building rapport. Uh, it's very critical, but more generally, uh, that selling is, is about having a, a real conversation with the person who's buying, right? Uh, I think our traditional concept of, of what uh, selling and buying is, is you know, just shooting a bunch of information at people and hoping that they'll, something will stick and then they'll, they'll you know, buy whatever it is you're trying to sell. When really, the person who's selling is there to solve a problem for the person who's buying. So one of the things that I've learned is not, not to make assumptions, always to ask the right questions and to listen to those questions and um, use those answers that I've received from my, from my customers to um, provide what they need in terms of my products and features as against overselling my products and overselling my features. Being an engineer, we are too precise towards like technical stuff. We assume that the uh, customer or the friend in front of us may be technical enough and we just go into technical depths and ask a lot of questions and not actively listening to them. But what we have to keep in mind and what not to assume if he's an engineer, or build a rapport with the customer, know, know him if he's competent enough to understand your questions and build your questions accordingly, actively listen. Greg Bell's talk was great. Um, it's not every day that you get to listen to a CEO, um, especially someone who has successfully managed several companies. Um, so overall, uh, the talk was great and he gave a lot of great feedback, um, uh, specifically just going over the uh, sales man management role um, and kind of what it entails. Um, I really liked his talk about company culture um, and how important that is for you to kind of fit in within a company. And the most interesting part was for me is the interviewing part because he was saying like when you go for an interview it's better to interview them as well so it's not sometimes that just you are like as an interviewer to so try to ask the questions from them like what is their cultures because you want to work there too so it's important for you to like your job. Day three is where it gets exciting. It's about how you have a good conversation with somebody to discover how you can help them and whether or not they can afford it. That's what modern sales is all about. And at the second half of the day, we look at the software that can be used to control that, some of the sales forecasting and reporting software and techniques that can underpin those sort of conversations. So today we talked about the Beckon Meeting Magic uh, strategy. So basically it's an acronym for a timeline of specific steps that you should follow um, when having a sales meeting. Uh, I think it'll be very beneficial for my next job um, just to keep me on track and know what to say and when to say it. So uh, one of the interesting things I really, I really, I really learned today is asking um, when you're going to someone, because most of the time people now they don't have much time. So when you go into your someone you want to get their buy-in, you ask them, okay, you tell them first, I have so much to tell you, but I don't know if you have enough time. Can I ask you a few questions? Do you have a few minutes? So if somebody challenges you and says, uh, you know, give me a give me a pitch in in as short a time as possible, you can say. Uh, you know, let me, can I ask you some questions before we begin to make best use of your time, right? And uh, I think that's really, that's a really interesting technique and something that I'd like to use in, in my own career um, because technical people can often get, uh, you know, lost in the weeds, so to speak. What words to use, what sentences to use, what sentences not to use. Uh, giving an example like how to start is, uh, may I know about your business, like something to start with so that a person may open up, give us more information about the business.
So today's presentation is really was useful from to learning from Mohammed because he what I like is he started with his experience. He just came to Canada a few years ago and then he had like he was a young guy with the idea and then how he make his dream true and then now he's a successful businessman. So it's really good to know people who can start from somewhere, from like nothing, and then be a successful in business. Today, Mohammed helped me understand that sales is actually going through a paradigm shift from the old way of doing things, where you need these superheroes to sell, to a new way that achieves faster results, less time, and really straight to the point. And it makes me feel really comfortable understanding that sales is actually heading in the right direction. So I had a very different perspective about Salesforce from my last organization. I used to think like they are just handling the with the numbers or like they don't understand the technical depth of it. Whereas now I feel no, I was wrong. They actually understand because in our company also there was CRM system and they used to use it. And I used to feel oh, it's not that important. But now I can understand it's really important to filter out what's good and what's bad as a lead, which field they should go behind, which should they be leaving behind, and which can be a maybe future prospective uh, customer to you. So recently in our organization, we implemented Salesforce, um, and for the longest time we're using a, a different platform. And you know, when we implemented it, obviously the, there was change involved, and people typically resist change. Um, so Mohammed's presentation, what it, what it gave me was perspective on why we implemented Salesforce. Because for the longest time, we were more traditional selling. You know, we would be in field, um, you know, traveling a lot, and it wasn't efficient. And to get the company's revenue target in mind, it, um, it allowed me to see you know, how much actual leads and opportunities I need to get that number. Day four is where we step away from the conversations. We go into those situations where you have to talk directly to a person. In the first half, we look at formal but very, very effective sales presentations on a team and an individual basis that end with a very clear, well-defined action. Second half of the day, we look at elevator pitches and all the variations on those. The essential thing about the elevator pitches that our students learn is that they grab the potential buyer right at the beginning. If that person really isn't matched with what you offer, they find out very quickly and politely. But if they become interested, then a good conversation could pursue. The most interesting thing I found about Tell Them, I found that um, when you want to present something, it doesn't have to be a sales, it can be presenting an idea, it can be a product launch, information about a product or anything. The structure, how you go through it. Because most of us as engineers, we just want to go, just tell them the technical parts, just tell them the information, right? But some of the people, they would be not into it or they would, you have to make them interested first in the topic you're talking about, right? So you tell a story to grab their attention and you have to go into the PRS and then you have to show a picture or give a graph or something. So you make sure you grab the attention of most of your audience, right? And then you tell them what's your thing, but you don't give them everything. So you keep them a little bit, they want to go and ask you more and more. Um, and then going back at the end, telling them how you, they can reach you. Because some people, they don't know, okay, it's a good idea, then what? So I love the structure, how it's, it's easy. So you don't forget anything when you go through it, when you present. Because when you present, sometimes you forget things. So it's good when you go and have a structure. Today's class has been very great. Um, it's, I've always had issues with presenting and being able to pass my message across. I, I could be pretty shy and when I in, when I'm in front of my audience, I just lose it, and I just just keep, you know, reading on my reading my slides instead of actually passing message and engaging my my audience. So, we what I've learned today, I tell them, it's just perfect because it has given me that sequence I need to follow to be able to engage my audience, my colleagues, you know. So um, it, it's a great takeaway for me. Okay, so elevated pitches, what we learned today is a very effective and impressive technique which we can use with a potential buyer where we know that we have already identified that buyer. So in this case, I know what is their need, how I can attract him. 
so we can give an example like how other customers or other people are being benefit benefited by that current offer which they are using and you are not secondly we can even compare in this statement with the competitors where unlike this competitor or unlike that competitor you are lagging behind in one way or the other so it's just a one minute statement but it is going to attract the person to come back and ask you more details about the solution elevator pitches are not just um, selling your features and functions of your product but also telling them um, how that compares with your customers uh, with your competitors and also um, giving them um, getting them to take action after that. Day five is another day of two halves. In the first half, we have an external speaker who comes in and talks and runs a very small workshop in the very latest e-marketing techniques, way to use the internet to bring people to engage with you. After a short rest, the second half of the day happens, which is all about team sales presentations. We have external assessors come in, who market and give feedback uh, and the whole thing is focused around creating a very highly motivated action at the end of the presentation. Today we had a guest speaker come in and talk to us about uh, different ways that you can use to uh, offer your service to like a much broader audience uh, online uh, using different tools such as Google, Twitter, um, and how to uh, use your money more wisely in terms of marketing dollars uh, to boost your site and get organic searches as well as paid advertising on uh, different online platforms. So we covered uh, all the general aspects. So we spoke about the marketing funnel. Um, he introduced us to Google AdWords, um, explained to us how it works, um, the cost per action versus cost per click um, scenarios, um, and really that marketing is more so an investment than a sunk cost um, and really outline benefits of marketing in general and why it's so important for anyone who's starting a startup or really just trying to reach out to their customer segment. Today was our final presentation on Smart Bike. That was our offering. So I think the buyers were quite supportive but uh, we kind of screwed up in some area that is like we kind of sprayed and prayed all our features on them so they were not able to link properly with the story what we were trying to do but all in all till the end they were able to get to that level what we wanted to actually do so another thing was that we were good at our content we were good at our handovers during the presentation and even our tellums were very clear so that was a good point about our presentation and the major takeaway what we got is that for tomorrow when we have our sales call we have to focus on specific features which we should discuss with the buyer and for the rest of the features which we have we can ask him okay here's the brochure you can come and we can have discuss this later or maybe you can visit our website and see it there so we don't need we should not actually share everything in one presentation on conversation the presentation was about our grow up application so uh, we talk about all the feature and function of the uh, grow up app and also um, about how benefit the parents can get from the application and then it was it was really help for all the presentation skills your self confidence and also um, as a professional sales you can if you want to sell your product to someone so how you can do that so it was really helpful for me and it was really good experience and good practice and the comments uh, was really good they they give us like really good feedbacks they were so interested about the idea of the grow up application so the presentation went very well uh, i was kind of nervous going into it the first time uh, i just you know usually i don't get nervous but this time i seem to have something on my mind uh, but you know with Trevor's energy and you know we kind of laughed beforehand I kind of just quickly switched my state so I was really good uh, and what I learned from it is never ever insult the panel you know if, 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 you're, if you know they're doing something not very well don't tell them they're doing that poorly you're better off just putting it in a, in a different way uh, you know Trevor gave me a really good one he said uh, I challenge you to, you know, increase your whatever by 15%. You know, b better than saying, you know, we can do a better job or you're doing, you know, very poorly at something. So that's something that I'm definitely going to take, uh, take with me forever. 
I wasn't nervous like I normally used to be, uh, which was really cool. Um, but the only thing was um, I got carried away with the system. It, it, it was a beautiful laptop. I got carried away instead of me to look at the screen and at my panel. I was busy, you know, reading. Well, I wasn't necessarily reading, but I was rather <laughs> got sucked into the laptop, you know. So, so in terms of, uh, of what I saw, um, it was absolutely great to see engineering students um, learning the basics of selling and selling in this case it was products and services but ultimately everything in business everything in, in and much in engineering is about selling you've got to be selling your ideas to a manager you've got to be selling it to decision makers you're going to have to sell to get your co-workers to buy into the the initiatives that you're working on jointly so a lot of uh, oftentimes unfortunately engineers tend to think that selling is a is a bad thing or, or is not something that they need to do but I think fundamentally everybody and not just engineers but everybody is always in the business of selling it's very good to see that that um, you know this type of training is is going on too often you see uh, engineers who are focused on the, the hard uh, engineering trade and too little on the soft skills that go along with that. Um, everything that an engineer does, whether it be in government, military, business, ultimately results in some end product that has to be sold or, or influenced. So it, it's good to see that there's a, uh, a structured approach to that and, and rather than just put a jumble of thoughts together into one presentation, um, Trevor is teaching them how to uh, organize their thoughts and, and put that into a, uh, a coherent uh, message to whoever it is that you want to influence. Day six is the culmination of the previous six days of work and it's all about individual sales calls. And in the afternoon, after a morning of practicing and coaching and looking at techniques, every single student does a 15 minute face-to-face -face call with external assessors, with a very clear structure, and all the things that go around that, and an intention at the end to have somebody who is a willing buyer. Wow, the sales call was really nice, interesting. It really, really went well, and uh, got a lot of feedback, a lot of feedback, but you really need to practice. You need lots of practice and practice before you actually try to engage with your client. Yeah, I think it went really smoothly, kind of like a, almost like a real life uh, scenario. Um, so it's, uh, I mean, it's great experience for like a future you know, real sales call. Um, I think, you know, the more you do it, the better you become. So that's super useful. It was really good. He was giving me the seeding questions. He was very supportive the way, the direction I wanted to go. And I kind of explored every area, as Trevor said. So there was few points when he wanted to say something. He said two words and he stopped back. I was like, no, I really want to support you, solve your need. And he opened up, he shared one more point, which actually was there in my product. So overall, I think I was able to satisfy him very clearly that I'll be solving all his needs. I asked him, you know, the seed questions to try to understand what his business uh, model was, what he was looking to get out of the meeting. And uh, I listened, you know, actively to understand, uh, you know, his needs, what his needs were, and I explored it a little bit more to see how I could expand on that. And uh, I went through the process to understand what he, wa what he wanted to take out of that um, uh, meeting. And at the end of the day, I told him, well, yes, I can deliver what you wanted. He's a, he's a consultant who started his own com consulting company and he gave me the real in-fields uh, like feedback, how it can help, how the call could have been better and how I could have improved my convincing power, how I could have brought in the more valuable points between the conversation and what I did was like just tease him and to, uh, take him to the end. But he said, how can I bring it to the between and make it more powerful to convince and make him more interested till the end. Uh, we immediately got down to business. He hit me with a hard one saying, you know, hey, I don't have much time. You know, I, I used Trevor's tactics to, to uh, again, take control of that. Uh, so that was good. You know, we went through the whole process. Uh, in the end, uh, there was one thing that he focused on, which was uh, a key question. Again, that question was, uh, what would that be worth to you? Right, that's something that uh, 
that I'd like to position more often, uh, especially in my line of work. Uh, I think I could find um, an easier way to deliver value if I knew how much was actually worth to them. Yes, so just a few minutes ago, uh, we did an interview of many different people uh, essentially simulating a sales call. And I find it's uh, very uh, interesting, very intriguing, very important, especially for the engineers. Is because we as the engineer, engineers, and I'm one myself, uh, mostly thinking about technology and not people uh, who are going to be using technology on the other end. So it's very important to connect uh, with uh, those people uh, and speak those language. And this particular course uh, helps those uh, engineers uh, to learn the important techniques in having those conversations. Oh, it went very well today. Um, lots of good discussion between the students and the uh, uh, simulated customer. Uh, this is great because uh, very often engineers coming out of university are fixated on making things bigger, better, faster or slower depending, but uh, in the end it has to be come down to the value to the customer and this, these types of sessions help instill that culture, if you will, to uh, ask why are we doing it? What's, it, what's, what's in it for the customer. Since I came to this course, I have learned things that I have wished I would have learned like 20 years ago. Because it would have helped me to grow my business, because I'm a business owner. It would have helped me to actually add value to myself and to my clients. But with what I have learned so far, I see myself maximizing my full potential. And the engineering part, it's not, it's not hard to to learn the technical part. As an engineer, how you have been all the time, your mind is structured, you can Google whatever, this manual you understand, the techie part is not that, that hard. The sales and the marketing, this is like outside of our comfort zone, right? So this is when you learn, you become like a complete package. So I came to learn, or my, my, to master my skills in selling. And uh, in the past few weeks, the course has been nothing short of excellence. I've been able to master skills that um, I never knew existed, but now I know they exist and I'm going to use the skills in my communication, in my selling plans, and it's, um, going to be, I'm going to be using these skills for a long time. Okay, I'm an educator, I teach at a community college, and I teach core courses to technicians. So they're required to take my course. The first thing I have to do when, I, when I'm faced with a group of students, a new group of students, is to create buy-in. So what, I need, what I'm going to take out of this course is the concept of, so what's in it for me? What are the students going to take away from this course? What's the advantage for them to be there? And, and what is my, um, essentially my offering? What am I going to give them? What I'll be taking out of this course um, essentially is you know, how to create a buying plan um, and all the different methods and tools that go into creating one. Um, you know, I'm confident that I'm going to be using this um, in my future job every single day. Um, you know, not only was I able to learn it, but I was also able to practice it and essentially, you know, see the outcome. I came here to learn how we sell things and how we present ourselves in the sales environment. Whereas, besides that, I'm leaving with how you actually present yourself, how you do the presentations to sell your product. What are the key things you should take care of? You need to think from bias perspective, which was not clear to me earlier, but which is very clear. So when you make your proposal, you should sit on the second seat, sometimes sit on the third, fourth seat to see the bigger picture of the thing before you go and meet anybody. So that is a bigger gain, which I was not expecting, but I got through this course. And I really enjoy it because it is more of a practical learning. So every exercise we do, we learn from each other. I've been a sales engineer for three years. And in order to get that job, I had to be an engineer. All right, so I had to hold an engineering degree and whatever. But it's not like I actually ever took a sales course, right, which is technically the first thing in my job. I'm not engineer sales, I'm sales engineer. So I better know how to sell if I'm going to do good at my job. 
So knowing this, it drove me to take in uh, Trevor's sales course because again, I wanted to be better at my job and I wanted to find new opportunities. And, uh, and what he showed me today or over the past couple weekends has been uh, quite an eye-opener. We all are ingenious. We are doing this from part couple of years. But we never know how to proceed, how to handle people, how to make them believe in what you are selling, right? So just thought of why not the sales cap? It will help me gain some experience. So what I got here is like till date, what I've been doing is like classic spray and pray or just tell them whatever you think is right and just forget about it. But now today after this camp, I know what to tell, how to tell, how to convince the person he, you, that he agrees to you, he buys your stuff, he completely gets involved with you. This is something which I'm taking out of the course. And you know what? I was going through a Forbes article which says salespeople make the best CEO. Today after this Trevor's class, maybe I'm a really great salesperson, maybe in the future a great CEO. Sales camp is a journey, a long and hard one, for me and for the students. It's a journey from people who want to look at the detail and are used to looking at the detail through to the creation of very well-rounded engineers who are able to communicate, to influence and sometimes ultimately to sell.